Hi friends, I'm Shannon Vining from North Point. Um, thanks for letting us hop on to some of these midweek teachings. We've been working our way through some of the attributes of God. It's been so good for me to slow down and meditate on each one of these different character traits, and I hope it's been good for you too. Today we're looking at God is love. Love is something that has always kind of fascinated me. In college, I wrote a paper about love, and I compiled like all of these different quotes from classical literature to modern films to musical lyrics, and they were all attempting to define love. And it's everywhere in our culture, isn't it? Movies, books, advertising, music. Actually, did you know that love is the most commonly used word in all musical genres except for rap and heavy metal? Because of this, you know, we have to be careful when we're defining God as love that we aren't pushing our personal perceptions or cultural definitions of love onto God. Um, I think one of the reasons that love is so interesting to me is that it's both an emotion and an action. Anyone who has been in any type of relationship, like parent-child, marriage, even a pet, you know that that warm, fuzzy feeling of love, like it can come and go. So although that's part of love, it can't be the defining feature, nor should love be like a stoic, heartless commitment without any affection or emotion, <laughs> excuse me. Love is such a unique concept because it affects all areas of ourselves, our hearts, our minds, our will, our bodies, and our actions. No wonder Jesus narrows down all the commandments to love. So what does the Bible have to say about God as love? There are hundreds of verses that reference the love of God. And there are also countless books and articles and podcasts about it. I mean, we could look at the Greek words that scripture uses to talk about the different types of love, right? The romantic love, brotherly love, divine love. But as I prayed about what I wanted to share with you about this very broad topic, I felt led to concentrate on 1 John 4. This whole chapter is a beautiful exposition on love. If you want, maybe you could pause this video um, or podcast and go read the whole thing. But for now, let's look at um, three specific verses of this chapter, verses 8, 9, and 10, and we will touch on a few others as well. We're actually going to look at it in two different translations because sometimes that gives a little different flavor like that right here. So this is the NLT. It says, dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. All right, let's look at it in the message translation. It says, my beloved friends, let us continue to love each other since love comes from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and experiences a relationship with God. The person who refuses to love doesn't know the first thing about God because God is love. So you can't know him if you don't love. This is how God showed his love for us. God sent his only son into the world so we might live through him. This is the kind of love that we're talking about. Not that we once upon a time loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to clear away our sins and the damage they've done to our relationship with God. So a little further on in verse 19 of this chapter, John says, we love because he first loved us. Henry Nouwen, who was um, a priest who was well known for his teaching and his life as a reflection of the love of God, he talks about this passage and he differentiates between first love and second love. So first love, right? God first loved us. Or verse eight says, love comes from God. 
God's love is the very first love. It is unconditional and unlimited. So our love, the second love, is really just a dim shadow of that first love. You know, verse 10 says, not that we loved God. This is, it's our attempt at imitating God's love. Even the best, deepest, most pure, wholehearted human love cannot compare to his first love. Let's look a little deeper at this first love. Like what, what defines God's love? What is one of the biggest ways to separate out that first love from the shadow second love? Well, verse 10 tells us this is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice. For John 3, 16, right? What does that say? For this is how God loved the world. He gave his only son. Or Romans 5, 8, God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Over and over, scripture shows us that God demonstrates his love through intentional suffering. He willingly sacrificed his son on our behalf, knowing that we would continue to break his heart. Isn't it sad that so many people today um, seem to think that love should only be like happy, upbeat, or how we say in our house, butterflies and unicorns, you know, or have you ever heard like, love means never having to say you're sorry. <laughs> We've lost touch with the depth of love that can only come through sacrifice and suffering. As Ann Voskamp says in The Broken Way, love will always make you suffer. Love only asks, who am I willing to suffer for? What is our response to this great love? I think the first thing is that we have to receive his first love. Verse 16 of that chapter in John says, we have put our trust in his love. Do you? Do you put your trust in his love? Do you truly believe that God is willing to suffer for you? That he go to any length to show you the depth of his affection and care and passion for you? And Voskamp also says, letting yourself be loved is an act of terrifying vulnerability and surrendering. Letting yourself be loved gives you over to someone's mercy and leaves you trusting that they will keep loving you, that they will love you the way you want to be loved, and that they won't break your given heart. And I mean, if it's that terrifying to receive another person's love, how much more the love of God? And yet without love, 1 Corinthians 13 tells us we're just a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal, noisy and pointless, and just like adding to chaos. Do you receive his first love? And then second, we need to give our second love. Verse 17 says, as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. Henry Nouwen says, the mystery of ministry is that we have been chosen to make our own limited and very conditional love. The gateway for the unlimited and unconditional love of God. What an incredible privilege. I have this little piece of paper on my fridge. It was actually from the inside of a fortune cookie like years and years ago. It says, love is a willingness to give and expect nothing in return. It struck me so much when I first read that. It's just one of the most accurate descriptions of love that I've ever come across apart from scripture. Um, so every time like I'm annoyed at my kids or feel invisible or unknown or misjudged, I have to tap into his first love, right? We have to receive and trust the love our father has for us. And then, and only then, can we pour it out unconditionally and expecting nothing in return. I love this painting. It's by um, a Swedish artist named Singe Flink. And I think it's a beautiful portrayal of like receiving his love and then pouring it out, right? Our love is the overflow of his love for us. So just a few um, questions or thoughts for further meditation I wanted to leave you with. First, have you put your trust in his love, like First John says? If so, what does that look like for you in this moment 
to trust in his love. The other thing you could do is spend some time with Romans 8, 35 to 39, uh, such a, another beautiful passage on, on love. Um, and just see, ask God like to highlight some kind of truth about his love for you there. And then finally, um, just sit with this quote that we mentioned from Ann Voskamp. Love will always make you suffer. Love only asks, who am I willing to suffer for? Is there some suffering God is calling you to for the sake of love? Thank you so much for joining us. And we will be back next week with another midweek teaching. Bye.